Hello and welcome to our sixth week of our stories during COVID-19. This is going to be our final video in this particular series. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to do these and I hope that you found them useful. And just looking over on the website, uh, holding it together, uh, apart.com, which is the fantastic Dublin City Council website, there are lots of new classes coming online. There are Pilates classes, kids art, smartphone photography, there's gardening, um, there are dance classes, there are uh, homemade cosmetic classes. There's just a whole range of fantastic classes there. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to go and delve into those as well. And uh, I was delighted also to see uh, an additional um, resource on the website is a section on grief and loss, which hopefully is going to help people to, to those that have, have either lost somebody um, close to them during COVID-19 or perhaps somebody in the front line who's, who's had to, to deal on a daily basis with, with other people's grief. There's a fantastic resource there helping people. And so I would really encourage you to go over and have a look at that. So let's begin our, our, uh, our session today. So as always, it's about connecting uh, with each other creatively. And nothing will be different this week. So I was very conscious, particularly I think I was uh, inspired by the Dublin City Council website, just looking at, um, you know, we're, we're coming out of the, the, the tightness, I suppose, of the lockdown. And, and uh, on the 8th of June, hopefully we'll be able to, it'll be eased a, a little further. And uh, for, for many people, it is, is the first time to begin to really catch their breath and, and get a sense of, of what they've been going through. And for people who have suffered uh, terrible losses during COVID-19, the, there's, there's, there's a huge comfort in the words that we can, we, we can speak and the words that we can write to them. So this, on this kind of our final session, I wanted to really just focus on the comfort of words and how we, in a creative writing capacity, can, um, can give comfort and solace to either to other people or, or, or to ourselves as well. So as always, uh, grabbing ourselves a pen or a pencil and a pad, or if you're working on your computer or your laptop, uh, get yourself set up um, to begin, to begin our, our, our class uh, this evening. So uh, even though we, we have been focusing very much on our stories during COVID-19, very conscious that uh, throughout the world, there are many other stories happening as well that have had a huge impact on people's lives, both abroad and a huge impact on people's lives in Ireland as well. Um, and so I wanted for this, uh, I've chosen a few poems this week, but, but this poem I chose is from the extraordinarily powerful Maya Angelou. And I think it has obviously particular importance at this time um, during the uh, American history. And I really just, every time I read it, 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 I think it both comforts and it challenges, which is the best of what poetry can do. So still I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Cause I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes springing high, still I'll rise. Do you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't take it awful hard, cause I laugh like, like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still, like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into the daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. And this poem was written in 1970, 1978 
um, and it's just as relevant and important in 2020. So if, if, we, if we look at it in terms of, of, of obviously the powerful message and, 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 and it, how relevant it is, but, but also if we're looking at it in terms of comfort if, if, um, and, and how well my Angelou does that. So that wonderful repetition of still I rise, still I rise. So if, 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 if we were looking at this poem as an inspiration for writing a piece of our own, maybe looking at, at some lines that really strike you and, and, and looking to weave your own poem around that. And you know, whether it's I, still I rise, it could be still I hope or still I care or still, you know, maybe pick a word that, 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 that works for you. And I, I just love the, the idea of, of, I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. So there's, there are so many lines in here that are so powerful. And just like hope springing high, still I'll rise. And if there was an echo of that in our own lives, as we're moving out of, of kind of under the terror of COVID-19, you know, what, what does that hope springing high feel like? And what will it feel like for us to, to rise again and hopefully to a, to a healthier and, and, and happier future? So I was just um, watching something there recently on, on, on TV and or maybe it was on YouTube and it was a, a doctor who had for nine weeks hadn't been able to see her two daughters because she was working in a unit um, uh, where, where COVID-19 it was so infectious so her little daughters hadn't seen her for, two di for, for nine weeks and I was just wondering you know what words of comfort could you give her somebody who had in the line of their of their duty in the line of their job couldn't be be with their family so perhaps this could be a writing prompt what words of comfort would you give her or any people working on the front line or perhaps you know she's just come off a shift and two or three of the patients that she'd been um that she had been minding had had died so what words of comfort could you give her And because we're, we're, we're looking this week at words of comfort and particularly in the context of, of, of grief and loss, you know, e even though they can be difficult subjects to talk about, there's an incredible power to, to, to talking about the things that uh, make us sad or, 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 or scared or, or um, that, that, that huge weight that that grief has on us. And we, we know that when, when we are grieving and others speak to us, with, with comfort, you know, with comfort, it really makes such a difference to us. So just what words of comfort would you give her? And this is a, this is a poem that I remember reading actually at, at an, an uncle of mine when he, um, or yeah, an uncle of mine when he died, uh, re reading this um, at the funeral, and it's a again if it, you know if if somebody has died, what kind of what kind of comfort may they get in words, and whether or not somebody is religious or not, or believes in resurrection, even just the the particular way that this poem and the words that are used and and the way that the language is so simple and so accessible can really, really help and comfort somebody. So this is a translation of a poem by Vladimir Holland. Resurrection. Is it true that after this life of ours, we shall one day be awakened by the terrifying clamor of trumpets? Forgive me God, but I console myself that the beginning and resurrection of all of us dead will simply be announced by the crowing of the cock. After that, will remain lying down for a while. The first to get up will be mother. We'll hear her quietly laying the fire, quietly putting the kettle on the stove and cosily taking the teapot out of the cupboard. We'll be home once more. 
So a writing prompt from this particular poem and image could be, if you were to imagine that you needed to comfort a small, you know, a small child um, that had lost somebody and they were afraid of what happened after death. So you can imagine the comfort that a poem like this might give to an adult, but what, 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 what kind of a poem might you write for a little child that was grieving and was trying to make sense of somebody being gone? And what words could you give them that would, that would allow them to feel the comfort that it was, it was going to be okay? So if you just look, you know, just take your time reading over that poem again, and you might like to take a line, um, even forgive me God, but I console myself and then you might, might, might continue that. And again, if this is not about whether we believe in a God or we don't believe in a God, this is, this is very much about the power of words to console and comfort. And that wonderful line will be home once more. And so what words would you use to comfort a small child? What would that poem look like? Or what would that piece of writing look like? And even looking around your house at the, you know, those, those, sm those small, you know, like the kettle, which is a, such a kind of a symbol of what it means to be home and the comfort of home. And I remember there's a beautiful, there was a beautiful book, children's book I read years ago. And, and the, the idea of it was, was just the, the, the simple making of tomato soup. That's what the whole book was for the little child of, of that's what represented home, coming home after a cold a day and being getting wet on the way home from school and coming in the door and, and, and there on um, there was one the, the, their parent giving them a, a bowl of tomato soup. And it was just it was so simple, but it was just so beautiful. So what might what might symbolize the comfort of home and could help a small child who was feeling the loss? Um, and this poem, um, Mary Oliver died last year um, and she is an extraordinarily powerful poet. And, <coughs> excuse me, this is one of those poems that um, over and over again, um, it comes up on websites everywhere and uh, many of you may be familiar with it, but it's one of those poems that really speaks to us when we are feeling like we are lost and we don't know where to turn to um, and we don't sometimes about where we don't know where we belong. And I think coming out of COVID-19, that is a feeling for many people is that I'm not too, you know, I know what we came from and I know where we still are now, but I don't know where we're going. Um, and I don't know where I'm going to kind of fit into that. You know, particularly people who have lost their jobs or uh, people who have, who have been deeply affected by COVID-19, you know, kind of how to, how to find our place again in the world. Um, and again, I was just echoing because it is, it, it is so relevant at the moment, just this week, you know, just echoing what's happening for the moment with, with, with communities in, in the United States and particularly black communities. Um, how to find that, our, 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 our place in the world and to, you know, that, that there's a wonderful line in this one and I'm, 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 I'm read it now, just how, how to, to cope with the despair and, and, to, and to find our place in the world. You do not, it, it, so it's called wild geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, 
the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. So again, if you were looking at this as a writing prompt to take a line from it, I mean, I, I just, there, there's some extraordinary lines in there. I mean, that line, tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. And if, if we're looking at it in terms of Ireland and the rest of the world, there is, there is so much despair around COVID-19 and, and, and other difficulties. And so that would be a, a that, that could be a line that, 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 that you could begin with. And the other lines that really strike me are whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination. So where would that bring you in your writing? And so in our, in our final section of Over to You, I um, want to thank my regulars, uh, Veronica and Damien, for, for sending in some work. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, it's, it, it's been great to, to, to read what's, what, what's happening. So this is, from, this is from Veronica. And last week our, our, our video was around all creatures, great and small. And so she sent in this lovely uh, image of her dogs. And it's a much longer piece that, it, 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 that these lines have come from. But, but Missy is the little dog there on the left hand side and then um, the dog on the right hand side is called Colt and the two of them seem to be getting on famously. So Missy was dumped in the woods, left to die in a cardboard box. Her scrawny body covered with sores, eyes glued with infection, too weak, too weak to whimper. Three months of intensive care she held her own with the dogs at the shelter. And then the poem continues on where obviously um, Missy found a home with Veronica. And just the fun that they have together and that her heart melts when she snuggles, when, when she snuggles up to Colt and slowly maneuvers onto her back. And there's ex exactly, we see that there. So just the pleasure that uh, Missy brings to Veronica's life, but also for, for Missy and uh, that wonderful life that she has. And, and the importance of, of, of the words of comfort, but I'm really conscious of, of the comfort of, the, of, of a touch and just the, the sheer pleasure of, of being around animals and, and, and humans that we can hug and hug on them and touch is really, really important. So thanks for that, Veronica. And then Damien was inspired um, more th thinking about that piece around, you know, now that we're coming out of the lockdown, what about people who have, um, who'd worked all their lives and, and are, are perhaps now need to work from home or have lost their jobs. And so this is from, this is from Damien very much kind of looking, look, looking towards the next stage. So he says, after 20 years, his journey to work on January the 30th is the usual uneventful 84 kilometers by bus, Mullingar to O'Connell Bridge in about 82 minutes, anxiety and stress arriving at his desk. After 20 days, his journey to work on May 30th is the usual uneventful 11 meters in slippers, bedroom to spare room in about nine seconds, no anxiety, only a calm arrival at his new desk. Positive or negative, the future will decide. Either way, this is real change. So very much kind of looking at it for some people, the, the, the kind of the pleasure and, and, the, and the, the calm of working from home. And then for others, it, it, brought, it, it brought a lot of difficulty as well. So just that, as, as Jamie says, uh, positive or negative, the future will decide. So I'm just going to leave you. Um, we're just uh, just going to leave you with the with a poem. Um, and this, I'm just I'm just going to say this. It's a poem uh, I wrote called Reframe, and I'm just very conscious of it at the moment in relation to kind of that grieving and loss. And I wrote it when my mother was dying. And um, mum is dead now, over six years. But I remember I, I wrote it when my mother was dying. And often when we do think of of, of dying and death. People think, oh my goodness, it has to be such a, it, and it is such a difficult time, but life has a funny way of sometimes in those mo moments of great difficulty and grief, there's huge, there's beauty as well, and there's, there's joy. And um, 
I wrote that I wrote this poem in that moment where kind of realizing that there is there, there's joy even when there's huge grief. So it's called Reframe. I head over to visit you. You've spent the night in hospital, platelets so low you bled just for the heck of it. We no longer panic, you and I, like in the beginning when the sight of runaway blood prompted illegal U-turns, racing back to St. James's Hospital. Stay calm, stay calm, keep pressure on it. I head over to visit you. Sammy the dog has eaten your bottom teeth. Tired of chocolate still in their wrappers, pincushions, hearing aids and rubbish from the bin. He was tempted by your teeth instead and you are left with half a smile and someone else's blood inside you coursing through your stubborn veins. That silly dog lying on the couch, butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. And we are all laughing, you and me and dad. And I'm wondering, is this as far from dying as we can hope to be? I just want to thank you very much for, for uh, tuning in and I really hope that you got some uh, writing tips from what we've done and uh, even though in some ways we, we, we ended on a, uh, on, on, a, on a note of, you know, kind of focusing on, on, on the grief and the loss, I'm really hoping that you saw that those words of comfort and the power of language to help us to, to deal with what can often be a really, really difficult situation. So I wish you all the best in your writing. And um, as I said, I would uh, strongly recommend that you go over to the Holding It Together Apart uh, website. And there are just so many fantastic resources there for you uh, during this time of lockdown. And good luck with the next stage. And hopefully we'll all be out and about and as much as back to our, 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 our in, in a new normal um, very soon. Thanks very much. <laughs>